That's a live shot right now of Half Moon Key from up above, a beautiful spot at the southern end of the Lighthouse Reef Atoll, and our location for day two of Ends of the Earth. Really pretty, the waters around this, this area. And they're also a living laboratory for researchers from all around the world. Yesterday, I had a chance to catch up with members of one research team. They're operating on a small island not far from here. They're learning about the reefs, trying to save them, and they're practicing what they preach. Glover's Reef, named for a pirate who once looted these waters, is today home to a research center dedicated to conserving its treasures. Way back in the 1970s, a group of world-renowned um, marine scientists had identified Glover's Reef as the best place in the whole Caribbean to set up a research center. Owned and operated by the Wildlife Conservation Society, the facility is devoted entirely to studying our changing oceans. Alex Tilley is the resident scientist. This research station is, is basically here to provide a constant presence on the atoll so that we can continually gather data on, on uh, the abundance of species and the health of the reef. And so we're measuring and tagging conch, lobster, turtles, things like that to try and gauge what their population is like. Those are indicators for the health of the system generally. With their focus on water and conservation, the staff practices what they preach. We gather rainwater for our usage because there's no natural fresh water here. That ingenuity extends to, well, other aspects of everyday life. I have to confess, it's been a long time since I visited someone anywhere where they said, have you seen our toilet? <laughs> All right, so you're obviously proud of this thing. Why don't you describe it a little bit for me? Uh, sure. This is uh, what we call a composting toilet. So it's a completely dry system. It's mixed with just uh, sawdust. And we turn it over with the sawdust, and then it becomes odorless, and it's recyclable, and we use it for um, sort of plant nutrients out there. Extreme as this may seem to some, we're soon reminded of why they're needed. This is Northern Two Key, about 50 miles off the coast of Belize, and we had a bad storm here over the last 36 hours. When the wind stopped blowing and the sea stopped churning, this is what had washed ashore. Now this is Belize, not some urban beach in the United States. So if we treat our oceans like this now, how are they going to treat us in the future? Everyone can do their bit, you know. It's just about taking that extra step, thinking a little bit about it, and trying to minimize your usage. Dr. Chuck Carr is a senior conservationist with the Wildlife Conservation Society. Doctor, good to have you with us. It's a pleasure to be here, man. We were so impressed by what we saw over on Glover's Reef yesterday, and, and it's essential to the protection of the reef that they do their research. What kind of an investment does it take to keep a place like that up and running? It takes a lot of commitment, and the Wildlife Conservation Society is um, into this for many, many years now. We're into decades of commitment to Belize, and a, a, quite a lot of money. You said to me yesterday something that struck me. You said, what worries you is not what you know about what's happening to the reef. What worries you is what you don't know. Can you explain that? Well, it's an extremely perplexing situation, and it's very well illustrated here on these coral reefs that are now bleached. When you ask the marine ecologist what happens next, frankly, we're not able to tell you. That troubles us as scientists, and it should trouble the general public and the governments around the world. I was speaking to one of your uh, boat captains over there. He says every day or every few days he goes out and he checks in on the local fishermen to see that they're not taking conch, for example, that's too small, or fish that they're too small. And he says he always finds that they are. So how do you communicate to the locals here that in some ways they're going to put themselves out of business? Well, we do that in a variety of ways. One is working with the fisheries department to make sure our science is, is being accepted by the officers in charge. But we also go through uh, public media in Belize and through educational systems. We actually engage the fishing, the organized fishermen themselves. And you, you have been doing this for a long time. Your father, I should mention, was a noted conservationist. Are you seeing a change of attitude? Are you starting to see more and more people understanding this and talking about it? Certainly in Belize. It's been a joy to be here for almost 30 years and to see the emergence of a true conservation movement. It's shocking that we've now been hit by the coral bleaching event, but Belize is well organized. Doctor, thanks so much. A thanks pleasure. for letting us visit your team thanks. over there. We really appreciate thanks that. Thanks for coming to Belize. My pleasure.